A Chinese couple living in San Jose seem to have the idyllic life. A big house by the lake, a baby on the way, it all seems like they're living the American dream. But a visit from a younger and more carefree friend throws their life into chaos when some deep and dark secrets are revealed. Based on a stage play, this Hong Kong thriller gets you hooked from the start, but does it keep you there? Hi, I'm the Artie Dance from Asian Film Fans and welcome to this review of the Hong Kong mystery thriller, Fatal Visit. Ling and Tang are living the dream. Their big house has a lakeside view. Ling has a steady office job and a baby on the way. And Tang is about to sign on an investor for his new bathroom wear venture. Ling invites her friend Yanni to stay with them for a few days. Unbeknownst to Ling, Yanni has just broken up with her lover after a terrible situation. And facing ostracization from a dance group, she needs some time to herself to reset her life. But there are cracks in the relationship. Ling seems to be a control freak and Tang appears stressed out. Things begin to take a turn when the wife of Tang's business investor gets hospitalized after an incident at a dinner party. Yanni then discovers she's stuck in the middle of a very dangerous situation between Ling and Tang as a wardrobe full of dark secrets are revealed. If you like slow but methodical building up of a storyline for your mystery thrillers, then the first half of the movie has you covered. The opening scene starts the movie's mystery off with Ling walking into a bar and leaving not long after, trying to get away from the advancements of Tang, who's the bartender. We are then shown glimpses of her life. There's an older man and a sick mother. There's Tang's sordid history with debt collectors. All these flashbacks are mixed in with the present time. It makes for gripping viewing as the pieces of the puzzle are slowly revealed around us. The movie plays into the trepidations and even fears of those who have left their homeland to start a new life in a foreign country. There's the isolation and loneliness, or being taken advantage of and used by others. It's all shown in this movie as it helps to build up the stories of our three main characters. But it all kind of falls apart at the end. The way the movie is presented and the story is told is easily the best part. Integrating flashbacks of moments that are relevant to either the current or preceding scene in the movie help the audience in building that picture of what's going on. Acting-wise, veteran Hong Kong singer and actress Sammy Cheng does a great job in the role of Ling, the jealous wife and breadwinner, with mainland China actor Tong Da Wei playing the husband Tang. His backstory is a little sad, and there are times where you can't help but feel sorry for him even if a lot of his predicaments are his own fault, such as the dinner party where his plans are scuppered by Ling's work colleague. Charlene Choi as Yanni is probably the more interesting choice of the film though. Born in Canada, she gets to put her English skills to good use towards the end of the film. However, I'm not sure if she's putting on the accent or if it's natural. It's perhaps the fact that at 38, she's playing a character that acts more like she's 18. She's very laissez-faire in her approach to life and at times her character can be quite irritating. This isn't a negative though, as that's how she's supposed to be. I'm just a little confused on how at times the audience is supposed to sympathize with her. Is it the fact that she seems completely naive, supposed to be a positive character trait? However, solid characters and story aside, the ending turns into a strange slasher-esque film full of unbelievable moments that it's clear there's been some outside interference in this film. I've mentioned before about how the Chinese government can influence movies to the point where major plot developments and endings are shoehorned into movies that don't fit their narrative. And it's happened here again. This is a Chinese co-production, which means as a thriller, it needs to end a certain way. And the way it ends is not satisfying to the viewer, leaving you more bewildered and frustrated than relieved. Having said that, brainstorming possible better endings turned up fruitless. The movie could get a pass for the story and actors, the setting and its overall presentation and style. It's clean and the obvious color grading used to indicate the current moment versus a flashback works in the movie's favor. Unfortunately, due to the weak and nonsensical ending, this movie gets a thumbs down from me. I wanted to like it, but I can't forgive the ending. If you've seen it, what did you think? 
Thank you for watching this review. Please don't forget to press the like button and consider subscribing to support the channel.